You may proceed, Mr. Lambert. May it please the court. Yes, sir. Counsel. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Good morning. In nine days, July the 26th, it will be Dominic's birthday. He will be turning seven. And like many Texans, and like many Laredoans, the Hernandez family will go to his memorial like they do every year. And they will take him as gifts. This year, however, will be special on his birthday because he'll receive the biggest gift of all, a gift from you. That a jury in Laredo, Texas is giving him and his mommy justice. Objection, Your Honor. Just argue, Your Honor. He will now be able to smile, run, laugh, and rest peacefully. Dominic has left so many clues during this case. It's amazing. His precious blood at the crime scene, his Tweety Bird, his favorite train at grandma's house. All you have to do is look, listen, and learn. And even though he's not here with us physically, he speaks to you. He speaks to you. speaks to you through me. This case is not about me. It's not about the state. It's not about politics. It's about truth. It's about justice. It's about doing the right thing. It's about giving the right punishment. It's about protecting society. It's about accountability. It's about closure for the family. And it's about deterrence. It's about deterrence. This is not about religion. This is not about revenge. It's about the law. It is about the law. You know, when Mr. Boggs was in his opening, he went over there and puts his hands on Mr. Burgos and says, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Burgos is a dead man. He is going to die. Death is certain for all of us. The 
The only difference is that when Mr. Burgos planned and executed his own flesh and blood, an innocent baby, and the mother of that baby, he scheduled his own death. On April the 9th of 2018, he scheduled his own death. Deserve has nothing to do with this. He earned the sentence. Each and every one of you, each and every single one of you are the last link for law enforcement. In the criminal justice process, everything that we've done since we came together at Tamiyu, almost close to 400 people. Why? Why you? Like me? You took an oath to follow the law. Each and every one of you. We cannot do this alone. We cannot do this alone. You can give Dominic and Griselda the justice that they deserve. You see the difference? What he earned is the death penalty. And what Dominic and Griselda deserve is justice. So that when you carefully, callously plan and calculate the murder of a child, an innocent child and their mother, and you use your special skills and you use your knowledge, and you hide in plain sight, there's consequences. That's the message you're going to send with your verdict. Objection from sending messages with a verdict. We'll be given the court's charge and we'll be given the instruction with regard to what to do and, and those are the things that you need to answer the questions inside the charge based on the instructions that I give you. Remember that when you receive the charge. The evidence that we have brought you in the guilt and innocence phase proves beyond a reasonable doubt. It proves beyond a reasonable doubt that Mr. Burgos Aviles will probably commit future acts of violence in the society where he's going. You sat here. There are no circumstances, none. Not one or a few or any evidence of mitigation where to justify a sentence of life without parole instead of death. You took an oath and if you apply the law, if you apply the evidence and you apply the facts, then you will answer yes 
on the special issue, question number one. And you will answer no on special issue, number two. Life is sacred. I agree when Mr. Boggs stood here on Monday and said, life is sacred. And what did he say? It's sacred to everyone in here. Well, we know who it's not sacred to. It's not sacred to this man. The story, after three weeks in trial, the story ends with you here today. Remember what I said in opening. There's a beginning, there's a middle, and there's an end to every story. Your story will end today. And again, you've, hired the, you've answered the highest call of duty And I'll tell you what, Mr. Boggs, this is still a big and important case. It sure is. To all of you, to the state, to the people of Texas, to the Hernandezes. And we thank you for your service. Remember the first day at Tammy U. We put this up, a true verdict render according to the law and the evidence will help you God. A true verdict render according to the law and the evidence. The law and the evidence. We have worked hard in bringing you the facts and bringing you the evidence and it shows the truth. It shows the truth. We have guided you. And you got it right in finding Mr. Budgos guilty. Your job is not done. The roadmap. How do you get to the right punishment? Remember, and all of you lived through this, during the time that we brought you here and you were selected for, for jury, to sit on this jury, what evidence do you consider today when you go deliberate in answering the special issue? You all remember this chart? We, we went over it and over it and over it. You all know how to work through this chart. You look at the evidence, not the guilty verdict. That's already been done. But you get the evidence from the first phase that you can consider, plus all of the evidence that we brought you in this phase that you can consider in answering special issue question number one. The state must prove, just like we did in the guilt and innocence phase, the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt, beyond a reasonable doubt, that there's a probability that Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles would commit criminal acts of violence that would constitute a continuing threat to society. A probability that he'll commit criminal acts of violence that constitute a continuing threat to society. So what do we have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt? Not that he will. Not that he will. Listen to that. But that he probably will. That's our burden. That he probably will. There's that word. And how do you make that decision? How, do you de how, how can you 
say that somebody will probably continue to commit acts of violence in the society where he's going. And we talked about the society. Where's he going? He's going to prison. And we all know that late there's what what did what did Mr. Fitzpatrick say? That prison is a society within what? A society. Society within society. Where people go and work. Where they keep Texans safe. It's not a perfect society. It's not a perfect system. We know that. But we will now, and I will explain to you all of the evidence, all of the truth, all of the facts that we brought you in order to answer that question. That we prove beyond a reasonable doubt that he probably will. That he's dangerous? We know that. We already all know that. So what do you consider? And here they are. This is what you will consider. The circumstances, the calculated nature, his forethought and deliberateness that he, ex that he exhibited, the existence of any prior criminal record, his age, his personal circumstances at the time of the offense, was he acting under duress? Psychiatric evidence? We know, we, know, we know the answer to that one, and we know the answer to the duress. We know the answer to the circumstances, the calculated nature. You all saw when, when he started doing this, and his character evidence. Multiple attempts on Dominic's life. Think about how many times he wanted to end baby Dominic's life. Think about it. Think about it as I go through this argument and, and I'll give you my, our version of how many times he tried to take his life. But think carefully how many times he did. 27 stab wounds to Griselda Hernandez. Two stab wounds to Dominic. Rapid but not instant death. Dom, little baby Dominic bled. He was alone when he, when he bled. He was looking up at the sky when he bled. His own biological son, a weapon of choice. Well, we know what it was. We know what it is. We never found it. Because who controls the crime scene? Who decides what to do with the evidence? He decided what to do with the evidence. Remember an opening statement. I told you that the state was going to bring you evidence to look into his heart. And to judge a person, you can't look at, you can't look at their appearance. You have to look into their heart. I, sh I told you that we were going to bring you evidence of the text messages that he was sending before during and after the murders of two innocent people. What was he doing during that time? He was sexting. That is so disturbing. That is so upsetting. And he did it all while serving his country. There was never any provocation by Griselda. You have the evidence. Go through the text messages. She didn't want to cause him any trouble. But did you ever see any attempt in all those messages saying, hey, how can I help? What do you need? Will $500 help out right now? 
something. No. No. Instead, he went into a plan to end the threat of two truly innocent people. And what did, he, what did he do? What did he do when he was hiding there in plain sight? How do you hide in plain sight? Think about that. How do you hide in plain, in plain sight? When everybody there is law enforcement and you're dressed as law enforcement, but yet you're the danger within the law enforcement. That's how he did it. Dominic's age. The gruesome murder scene. The painful deaths. Imagine. Imagine. It wasn't, it wasn't swift. It wasn't swift. It wasn't pulling the trigger <coughs> one time. This was up close. This was personal. 27. Seven times. And then once through the baby's chest. And then one through his neck. Unforgivable. You saw Dr. Fernandez's testimony. You'll have the autopsy reports. Study them. Study them. When you want to imagine the type of pain that this young mother sustained at his hands. Look at it. Look at what he did to her. Look at her defensive wounds. Look at the way he left her. He attacked her from behind. He ambushed her. She didn't know. She didn't know that that was the last day that she, that, that was the last day of her life. I mean, she was gonna go meet a law enforcement officer. She thought they were good. This is how he left her. Listen, the state of Texas did not create this situation. 
We didn't create the facts or the circumstances or the evidence. As hard as he tried to disturb, to stage, to alter the crime scene, we found it. Now we're handing you the baton. We've brought it to you. What did Dr. Fernandez say? The person who did this had knowledge. The person who did this had knowledge. This man had the knowledge. And what did I say in opening about clarity? After those 27 stab wounds, in killing this innocent mother, he walks the 20 yards over to the stroller, gets in front of this little baby. And it's like he's looking in the mirror, Mr. Boggs. He's looking right at himself. And he opens that buckle, takes the little phone out of his hands, puts it down picks him up, takes him over to the grass, lays him down. Picks up the shirt. He wanted to get it right. He picks up this Dominic's, one of Dominic's favorite shirts. And he pierces, aiming for his heart. And he doesn't stop there. He doesn't stop there. When little baby Dominic is still alive, he goes for the jugular. How long did it take baby Dominic to die? With every beat of his heart, he would lose blood. What was going through his mind? Where's mommy? Where's my mommy? This man was a stranger. The death was rapid, but not instant. He lost blood with every heartbeat. First, he would have gone into shock. 10 minutes to die. And the person who did this had knowledge. The calculated nature. I would submit that when, when Griselda advised Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles Remember she did that practice message in December? Say, hey, I'm sorry, nothing. I don't wanna mess you up, but I really need help. This is, I'm going through hell. I can't pay for school, I need help for daycare. Then in, on February 1st, she fills out the application. But when he finds out that this is coming, the wheels start turning. You have a choice. Do I man up? and do the right thing and accept responsibility for this little innocent baby that I fathered? No. Let me go this way. Let me end him. Because he doesn't matter. Every life matters. Every human life matters. His life matters. But he planned it. 
and then you start seeing it on March 25th at Winfield Park, he knows that there's an appointment for child support. He sets up the meeting on the twin, on, and, and then the Winfield Park incident. Remember April the 4th, what does he do? He goes to Snapchat. We talked about that in Guilt and Innocence. This, this is all going to calculation. This is all going to planning. You don't wake up one day and say, I'm gonna go kill my son and his mother. It doesn't happen like that. It takes planning. It takes calculations. Selecting when, where, and how he was gonna do it. He scouts behind the church on April 7th. Remember from FBI agent Masters report, he goes behind the church on, on Del Mar on April the 7th to look at where to get rid of evidence. Then he's trying to set up the meeting with Griselda. It's set up on, for the, on the 8th or the 9th. He's involved in the scheduling of the assignments for Border Patrol. What did Agent Dennison tell us? That there was Carrizo eradication going on, right? And that they had to take the cameras down. Who knew this? Who knew this? He knew it. The perfect location to stage the crime. What he didn't bank on was that DPS was gonna have a camera on one of the trails. That camera that caught him in Kilo unit. Remember? when he was leaving at 1010 in his kilo unit and he murders him on the 9th. He used considerable amount of time to calculate and plan the murders. Forethought, deliberateness, it all started with the child support. He gets served with the petition, with the notice of, to, to set up To, to set up in order to have those meetings, to start having those negotiation conferences. And you remember when she texts him, hey, you missed your meeting. He had other plans. The injection site where and how he killed them, the manner and means of the death in cutting their carotid and their jugular. How he ambushed, how he lured them to that dirt trail. Using his position, infiltrating the investigation, utilized time to his advantage. He contaminates the crime scene, he destroys evidence, and you see the video. What does he do when he gets in the car? Starts to lick. If you need to look at it again, it's there. But when he's sitting in the car, which arm is he licking? The right arm. The right arm. He's taking any, anywhere that he thinks he has blood, he's wiping it. All of that evidence you will utilize to answer special issue question number one with a resounding yes, a unanimous yes. It's clear, it's clear, we brought it to you. Beyond a reasonable doubt. Not that he will commit future acts of violence, that he probably, he probably will. That's, that's what we have to prove beyond a reasonable doubt. And we've given you a mountain of evidence 
that you could use to answer special issue number one. Then you move to special issue number two. The state, we don't have this burden. Taking into consideration all the circumstances of the, of the offense once again. We don't leave that. You consider the circumstances. His character, which we've shown you. And we're going to talk more about his character. But take that into consideration. His background, his moral culpability. That these circumstances or circumstances or circumstances warrant that a sentence of life imprisonment without parole rather than death be imposed. Everything that Mr. Boggs promised you in his opening, they fail. And we're going to talk more about that. Stay focused throughout this process. And just like you hold me and my team to our promises, hold him to his promises. Hold him and his team to their promises that they come up here and made. No mitigation in answering this question. Is there any mitigation? If you follow the law, if you follow the evidence, the answer is simple. No. There's none. your approach with that? I don't remember that specifically. We submit that whatever evidence was brought for mitigation, that you can still answer no. Weigh it. Consider it. I'm not telling you not to. Analyze it. Analyze all the evidence. Make your decision. 
It's your individual decision. And then collectively, uni unanimously, put no. We, throughout this entire process, have brought you consistent, credible, and cooperated evidence. Consistent, credible, cooperated, one layer after another so that you can make the decision. Let's go over that. Timothy Fitzpatrick. Now, let's make it very clear. Where does the defense want you to send Mr. Burgos? Where do they want you to send him? Life without the possibility of parole. So he could think about what he'd done. So that he can get punished for what he did. Really? Really, Mr. Boggs? We brought you Mr. Fitzpatrick, okay? 19 years or 21 years with the Texas Department of Criminal Justice in the corrections to show you what life in prison without the possibility of parole is. And what is it? Really, what is it? Recreational sports, education services, contact visitation, put up to 10 people on there four hours per, per visit, blow out birthday candles, color your coloring books. You want a job, just apply, sign up. You get to move around un unescorted around campus. You're in general population. You need a counselor, go see a counselor. Cable TV. They want to joke about the price is right. This is no joking matter. It's not. And it doesn't end there. Tablets, emails, music, subscriptions. Religious services in a dorm of, what did he say, 45 or 46 people. He'll be living there. If he needs outside medical care, we'll take him so he can get medical care. Oh, and he gets, you get the cafeteria access. Sounds like he's going to college. That's what it sounds like. That's who they want to send him. Is that punishment for killing an innocent baby? His innocent mother, in a vicious and a brutal murder, really? No, no. Now, if he wants to look in the mirror, let him do it on death row. There's a mirror in that cell. He'll have time to think. That's where he belongs, in an eight by 10 cinder block cell, 23 hours lockdown. That's where he'll get to think about what he did. It, again, Your Honor, objection, or argument for specific punishment, is supposed to focus on special issues. Argument, Your Honor. I don't think it's. Ms. Continue, move forward, please. Angelica Hernandez, that you, you saw the pain, Angelica, the rest of her family will never be the same. They'll never be the same. She had the courage to come up here and tell you. And when I asked her, how old would your sister be today? She, she, she looked in, at you and she said, she's frozen at 27. She's frozen at 27. And Mary Hernandez, the mother, freezes her room from that day and that they go in there to reflect. Their lives did matter. They continue to matter.
and life without the possibility of parole does not address that. Joshua Nunez, I don't remember, 16, 19, 18 year officer. What did he tell you? He sees the crime every single day. He sees the crime. He had to go and identify the body of his cousin and had to go and tell the rest of the family about it. Traumatized. You saw him. A man who has worked crime scenes, you saw him, how much trauma. Jose Luis Macias. Mr. Macias has no dog in this fight, okay? When Mr. Boston is opening through in the psychosis, what Burgos didn't know back then was what Macias came and told you. At this trial. And you have it. That on April the 10th, when he was taken to Webb County Jail, there was observed no delusions and no psychotic symptoms. Forget about the testosterone. Forget about the fentermine. There was no psychosis. He can come up here in a little while and say it a hundred times. He was normal. There was no psychotic behavior caused by those hormones. The classic blame game. You know what? It was the doctor's fault that he did this. No, oh, it wasn't. Was it the doctor's fault, Mr. Fox? Was it? Accountability, a grown man. Oh, it's because his mother didn't want him at birth. She had postpartum depression. But, but what does Mr. Burgos come up here and say, well, she was insecure. She was this, she was that. He grew up in, in Florida, married his high school sweetheart. There's no, there's nothing there. The childhood doesn't come into play. The man who he is, that is who you're judging. He had no active psychosis, no hallucinations, no signs of mental decomposition. And what, what, what was he concerned with? He was, and what were the words out of his own mouth when he got in the patrol car? This is fucking embarrassing. You guys are embarrassing me. And when he's talking to Reyes and Elizondo, you guys are fucking embarrassing me. This is a big embarrassment. Everybody at the station is, is, is already gonna hear about it. He says it in the car. He says it at the station. When he gets to the jail, he tells Masia, this is embarrassing. And then when his dad comes up here, he says, this is all over the media, all over the world. This is embarrassing. Really? What about the two little, the, two, the little baby that was killed and his mother? Stop thinking about yourself. He was normal. We brought you Dr. Dagoberto Gonzalez, a decorated Air Force physician with experience of administering and prescribing testosterone fetterman since 2013, a Remedex as well. It does. He refuted everything that Dr. Gupta came and said, okay? Who are you gonna trust, Dr. Gupta or what Dr. Gonzalez said? Because you decide if you believe some, none, or all of the testimony 
of the experts that were brought. You could take Dr. Gonzalez's testimony to the bank. Testosterone does not cause psychosis. The combination of the three do not cause psychosis. The dosages were within normal ranges. The lab results were at the lower end of the range. And the 11 physician screenings were all normal. 10 minutes on your first hour. There's industry safeguards. The fentramine extended use is normal. Remember the, the, the example he gave of using a Remedex, which was not prescribed for that, but that you could use. I, I forgot what he said, but you know, there's that off use, right? That the benefits in other ways. He used, I think, Ozempix as an example. No psychosis. He has prescribed this thousands of times. And I asked Dr. Gupta the same thing. In all your 25 years, 27 years that Dr. Gupta was licensed, have you ever seen psychosis in testosterone in your patients? No, I haven't, Mr. Alani. What about amphetamine? No, I haven't. There was three cases world, worldwide that, that Dr. Gonzalez found. And under very, what he said, extreme situations, did the fentramine cause psychosis? Why? Because it's not there, folks. It's not, it's not there. I don't care how many concoctions Mr. Bog sits there and makes. It's not going to happen. Because the science doesn't lie. That it causes anger? That was the worst that, that came out. Dr. Wilson said, well, it can elevate your anger. You get emotional, anxious, all of those things. And of course, if fentramin does cause it, psychosis, it's at the onset in combination with fenfen, or there's an overdosage where you're taking four to five times of the prescribed level. Those were the situations in which fentramin causes psychosis. Ladies and gentlemen, do not follow their rabbit trails. Do not go for their smoke screens. Objection to the denigration of defense counsel. It's argument, Your Honor. Stay focused. Stay focused. He was, and most importantly, he was absolutely not poisoned. Absolutely not poisoned. Now, they didn't like that response. You saw. They didn't like it. But it's the truth. And that's what we're here for, the truth. Remember this, we acknowledge the loss and grief. Everyone condemns and understands how lawful this crime is. He said in openings, all of us I believe in this room believe in the sanctity life. There is no doubt about it. We know who doesn't believe in the sanctity of life. He's sitting right there. He also said he has committed no criminal acts of violence in the five years he's been incarcerated leading up to the trial. You will hear from jailers who will describe him, describe him as a communicative, easy, quiet, and inmate who gives them no problems. You know what? It's all by design. He knows. He's, <laughs> this is classic. When they bring Elizondo up there, the retired jailer, and they ask her what books was he reading. What did she say? Harry Potter and psychology books. Psychology books is what he was reading. Oh, oh also the Bible. Uh, there, was a, there was some Bibles he was reading religious stuff. He is on his best behavior because he knows what's at stake. Ronald has aspirations. Remember that one? Ronald has aspirations and hopes to continue his career in his Border Patrol. When his dad drives around and sees the Border Patrol trucks, that's what he thinks about. Oh, what my son lost. 
opportunities that my son lost. What about Griselda's opportunities, her aspirations, her hopes? And what about Dominic's dreams? What about his opportunities? He'll never have them. He'll never have them. Gupta, we went over his testimony. He was found in violation by the medical board, but I was able to get some good information out of him. And it, it, it ends up at the very same conclusion. And against what the defense promised you, that he was poisoned by his doctor. I asked Dr. Gupta that question, and he said, no, Mr. Alanis, that's not a fair statement. The records are there, folks. Look at them, okay? Dr. Howard Campbell, you remember him from University of Texas at El Paso? What was he? He was a drug trafficking expert. He had no business here, folks. I told him that his that, that his, 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 his information was important, his studies were valuable, but not for this case. And what did he fall back on? Well, I talked to people at the supermarket. I talked to Mecarnasada as the Border Patrol agents, and they're about machismo, steroids, barbecues, beer, side chicks, well, do you have that data, doctor? No, well, I don't have it with me. Well, do you have those, do you do a questionnaire? No, no, I just ask. Really? Really? Is that what we're going with, folks? But he did make it a point to talk about chivalry. And chivalry, when I showed him the photos of what Ronald did, Ronald Anthony did to his son and to the mother of his son and he said the right thing that is not chivalry so remember when he talked about we're going to bring you this culture and show you failed not true psychosis not true his childhood trauma not true go back to the evidence If it sounds too good to be true, then it probably is. Who does this apply to? Dr. Mark Cunningham, their expert. Where is Dr. Cunningham? 2,237 miles away in Seattle. That's how far it is to Huntsville. Sitting behind a computer screen, crunching his numbers, like if he knows what's best for Texas and for Texans. It's not that easy, folks. It's not that easy. We have people on the front lines in these prisons. Lives depend on it. And what did he say when, when asked? Well, I usually can tell with the first phone call if, some, if, if I'm gonna be able to determine serious violence. He said that, you heard him. Really? Just in one phone call? One of the things that jumps out about Cunningham's data is how old it is. Remember when he was pressed right off the bat how defensive he got about, hey, well, your book says, well, hey, hold on. My book's 10 years old. So don't, don't you know, 10 years old. You were bragging about your book to Mr. Box. Now when I ask you if I could read uh, page 112 of your book, you say, well, my book's 10 years old. Can you imagine going to college, first day of class, you sit down and they give you a book that tends, that's 10 years old? It's unreliable. It's unreliable. I saw a date on one of those slides that said 1975. Really? 2002, 1991. 
The most disturbing part about his studies is that Arizona, New Mexico, Oregon, Missouri, Georgia, federal law. They just forgot Alabama. They might as well throw that in there too. What do they have to do with Texas? Nothing. Nothing. How scripted was that testimony? How scripted was it? And the most important thing about his testimony was he, he's a psychologist, folks, and he didn't even bother to interview this man, Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles, for his characteristics. Hey, don't you think it's important to sit down in front of the man that you're going to deter make such a strong opinion about and talk to him? That's not important. Well, it is important, folks. Maybe not to him. His, in his charts, and they're going to come here and they're going to just build up his, they're going to build up his testimony. But hold them accountable. How do you explain that if you use a gun, you get a, a minus one on his scoring system? And if you kill multiple victims, guess what? Zero. That doesn't affect your predictability. But if you use a knife or a sharp edge, it's not even considered. No, that doesn't, that doesn't factor in. Dude, he stabbed this poor lady 27 times. Don't you think that should be put into your formula somewhere? That he used a knife? He used a knife. That he cut his son's throat using a knife. Killing your own family member, does that go into your formula? No, that's not a variable that goes into consideration. The severity was not, uh, was not considered. When asked about the video interview to look at his behavior, you're a psychologist. Don't you think it's important to look at the behavior of the subject that you're gonna opine on? Well, I fast forwarded that section. Come on, man. No. That's wrong. Judge, an objection. The state fast forwarded through their own video for this jury. Right. Never, never did, Your Honor. Never did. We brought you One everything. So the, the jury is going to have all the evidence, half all the evidence that has already been submitted, and the evidence that will take that into account when deliberating under my instructions. Please remember that as best as you can. What did he say? I'm not testifying for the defense. I was called by the defense. He was argumentative about everything. 48 escapes. You know about that, Dr. Cunningham? Yes, but uh, that's, that, also, that means like they walk off campus and that's an escape. Really? Minimizing, minimizing. No statistics on prison escapes. We asked him, do you have any? information on prison escape since 1974 that you could share with a jury? No, I don't. Why? Why? You have a, the privilege to ask why he doesn't have that information. And then he says on one of the questions, and he's not even here for that, he says, well, he was high on testosterone, high doses of testosterone and fetterment that contributed to his rage. Those around the interview questions? Really? You're not even here for that. He was backed up in a corner and he throws out Dr. Gupta's. Look for the signs, folks. He did agree that prisons are not 100% safe or secure. How? And like, I trust Fitzpatrick. Fitzpatrick told it like it is, right? Objection to the sustained. Please hold both students. Fitzpatrick's testimony was credible. He brought you facts. He brought you information. Prisons are not 100% proof. Right? Why? Because they're run by people. People are fallible. People are calculating. People are conniving. People plan. The escape came up. 
with Dr. Cunningham, but don't pay attention to that. That's an anomaly. That's an anomaly on that escape. No, it's not. That's reality. That's what it is. And five people died because of that. That came out from the witness stand. Objection talking about Gonzalo Lopez. I never mentioned the name, Your Honor. I talked about an escape. Mr. Anani, please wait till I give my ruling before you respond. Yes, sir. All right. Let's move on. His argument to move on is keep it within the confines of the, of the uh, what did he say? Admittable evidence. He finally agreed after sh being shown his book that he agreed that direct evaluative contact with a capital defendant is considered the best practice and should be requested by the mental health professional in all cases. And he violated that number one rule from his own book. But they'll tell you, well, that's not what he was going to do. But it's in his book. Follow the book. On April the 9th, was Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles a low risk person for committing serious acts of violence? Looking at all his characteristics on that day, was there any way of even imagining that this man would have done what he did? No. Because statistics don't work. You're dealing with humans. The more states that he put into his pot, his melting pot, the higher the numbers go and the lower the percentage goes for risk. It's just this, moving around numbers. That's what they're doing. Commander Jose Hernandez, they brought him here to tell you what? That for five years, he's been a model inmate. Well, I'll tell you what, I did take from Dr. Cunningham. Remember that example he said, there's a difference when you're driving with your dad and when you're driving with your friends? That's all it is. That's all Mr. Burgos is doing right now at the jail. He's on his best behavior, right? Because the jail staff Commander Hernandez, Lieutenant Elizondo, those are the people that, that are like his dad, right? So he's on his best. That's all he showed. Again, psychology books that Burgos is requesting. What did Mr. Ronald Anthony Burgos' father come and say? He was in denial, folks. He comes here and must say at least 10 times how proud he is of his son, that he will continue to be proud of his son, and that he loves his son. Then when I ask him, did you see the mountain of evidence that we brought you? Did you see it? What did he say? It was all circumstantial. There was no direct evidence. And my son is losing his opportunities. And what does he say? Sin originates from who? From Satan, he said. Sin originates from Satan. And when I asked him, is killing your own flesh and blood, your own baby, an evil act? He said yes. He said yes. Never visited Dominic's memorials. Never visited Griselda's memorial. I'm just so upset that this is being co covered all over the news. I'm just so upset that my son lost his opportunities. And I'll never believe he could do this to anybody. It's not reality, folks.
you can answer no. Special issue number two, you can answer no. You don't want to be in a situation where you say, we should have, we could have. You don't. Down the road, you don't want to be in that position. We had the chance and we didn't. Stay focused. He's gonna come up here now, give their argument, use your common sense, hold them to the evidence, hold them to the facts, hold him accountable. To show that you deserve mercy, you must first give it to others. Listen to that. <clears throat> Listen to that. You must first give mercy to others. What mercy, what kindness did Ronald Anthony Burgos Aviles give on April the 9th of 2018 when he stabbed Griselda 27 times? No clarity when he walked over to take his son out of the stroller, when he put him down. Both of their organs, remember, both of their organs were bleached. They bled out. Baby Dominic took more than 10 minutes to bleed out. What mercy, what mercy did he give to these people, to these innocent people? Stay focused. Thank you, Honor.